doing our notes from yesterday. Our notes from yesterday were o was over uh, operations on functions, right? And we talked about the shorthand way of writing things. So operations on function means that I can either be adding, that means I'm going to find the sum, or I can be subtracting, which means I'm going to find the difference, or I can be multiplying, and I'm going to find the product, or I'm going to be dividing, and I'm going to find the quotient, or I'm going to be substituting, and I'm finding the composite. Okay? Um, so we went through those. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we talked, we did a practice problem on how to subtract, how to multiply, how to divide even, either using factoring or the long division method, correct? And then we did compositing, composing. Mm -hmm. And then on the back we went to fractions and we went over how to add. Again, we went over substitution and multiplication at the same time here. We went over composing and composing again. So today we're going to go over how to do it all with a graph. Okay, so with the graph, notice that I have a bold function and that represents f of x. And I have a thinner function that represents g of x. Everyone sees that? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to look at the first problem. So what is this telling me I'm doing? Adding. 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 So this means that I'm going to find f of negative 1 and I'm going to add it to g of negative 1. Okay, so when I do that, that means I'm going to first find G, f of negative 1. So when I find f of negative 1, what, um, where am I going to go on my graph? Negative one. What equals negative 1? X, x equals, equals negative 1. So I'm going to go to x equals negative 1, and I want to find f. So is f the, the thin line or the bold line? The bold. bold line. So what is f of negative 1? Negative 2. Negative 2, okay? And then I'm going to go to g of negative 1. So I'm going to go to negative 1 again, but this time I'm going to go to the thinner line. So what's g of negative 1? 1. 1. So now I have my <laughs> values, and I just have to plug them in. So now I have negative 2 plus 1, and what does that give me? Huh? Gives me negative 1. That's so much easier. Yeah. How, is that, are we good? <clears throat> All right, so then we're going to... Hi, baby. You're being recorded. Huh? Oh. <laughs> All right, here we go. What's happening here? Uh, you're multiplying F and G. So I'm multiplying, so this means it's going to be F of 4 times F of the G of 4, lo siento. Really? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> She's gonna put you in the description of the video. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what's F of 4? <laughs> uh, wait, wait, I know this one. Three. three. Okay, so I went over to 4 and I went up to 3. Okay, what is G of 4? One. So I just take the values and I plug them. So 3 times 1 equals? All right, I want you guys to try C. So go ahead and do C. So on this problem, I, that I am F of negative 2 minus G of negative 2. What did you notice about F of negative 2 and G of negative 2? They're the same, right? They are the same value. And that value is? So I have negative 1 minus negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1. So that becomes negative 1. Keep, change, change. And what does that equal? Zero. Zero. How do we feel? A little soupy. All right, so let's look at D. So D. Um, just like anything else, you always do the most inside, the inside first. So what's my inside? G, G of six. six. So before I do anything, I need to find out what G of six is. So what is G of six? Negative one. Negative one. So I go here and G of six is negative one. So now I worry about the F outside. So it's F of negative one. Wait, what? What's F of negative one? Oh. Two, negative two. 
So all you have to do is worry about doing the inside first. Okay. So go ahead and do E. Give E a try. Jessica, okay. put it away. I'm not doing Jessie. anything. What'd you do? You don't have the problem with the board because you're busy checking a text message. Was a message you Snapchat? Okay. Wait a minute. Okay, I got it. Did y'all do it? Um, Remember, we do the inside first. Mm. Jesse. Mm. Jesse. <laughs> Jesse. Jesse. Uh, Jesse. Uh, I got two. I got one. Five, six. Where did you get? Bottom two. So, is it working? Is that working? I'm inside now. I'm about too big. It's all it is. When G is three, that's too big of a time. Oh, it's too long. And now I'm going to go to F. My bad. Time too much. Miss, what is that? A negative two? Four, eight. I don't know. Negative two. and they need that quiet time to process it. So be respectful of other people's learning. My bad. Okay, so let's go over this really quick. First you do the inside, right? So my inside is F of four. four. So I'm gonna go to F of four and I get three. three. So now I can worry about G of three because I can substitute F of four with three, correct? So now I'm gonna go to G of Three and I get what? Two. So my answer is two. Okay. Uh, uh. <coughs> Excuse me. Ugh, that's not a little dry. Sweet, sweet, sweet. What happened to that baby water? It's at home. I lost this. Uh, you lost the straw? Yeah. yeah. I got you. It's somewhere in my house. I just gotta find it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. Any questions? How do we feel about the. Yes, okay. Okay, the inside? Mm. Okay, so you do the inside first. Just think about like when you're doing um, parentheses or multiply anything with parentheses. Mm. You always do the innermost parentheses first, right? So same thing here. I'm going to do the innermost function first. So when I do the innermost function first, what's the innermost? G of 6. So I'm going to go to 6 and I'm going to go to G. Remember, G is the thinner line. So when I go to the theater line, what do I get as my value? Negative 1, right? So now I can substitute that in with negative 1. So now I can worry about this outside. So what is f of negative 1? <coughs> it's negative 2. If I go to negative 1 and go to f, I get negative 2. So you do the inner month. So just for, let's see how well we can do this. I'm going to give you a harder one. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Wait, why? Just to see what happens. Oh no. Huh? Okay, so she's not. Okay, okay. You do the innermost first. Innermost first. So the G2 first? first? Because it's the. Innermost. Oh, you're going to have to put it's a decimal. Like bit. No, I quit. Two and a quarter? Yeah. All I know is that it, the inside is just G2. That's all I know. 2.2 or 2.0? 2.2. Wait, give me two. Wait, two. 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 You're rude. <laughs> you called me crazy this morning. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. You know she's denying because we're still recording. Are we still recording? Yes. I'm not denying anything. All right, here we go. So innermost is what? G, G, 
G of two. So I'm gonna go to two and go to G. And that's like two and a third. So now I'm gonna have, oh, my head's in my own way. 2.3, did you put 2.3? Yeah. So two and a third, you be a little more specific there. Well, not use that line since six or eight. Okay, so now what's my innermost? F of two point three. Well, when I go to F of two point three, it's like right here. Go up and I end up at one. One. So I don't think it's spot on. I think it's close enough. <laughs> but you can't do two point three and then do one. <laughs> and then what I end up at? G of one. G of one gives me that number. Freaking 2.6. 2.6. Yeah, 2.8. I feel like it's 2.6. It's too close to the line. 2.7. I'll put 2.7. I'll put 2.6. Repeat. Do we ask Mr. Your answer is wrong. Ashley. Okay. So it doesn't matter how big it gets. All I do is I worry about the innermost first. And then I work my way out. Got it? Okay. All right. So let's get going. Let's do a little more processing here. We're going to do a little more processing with this. So we're going to talk about. So we're going to talk about here. Um, remember when we talked about intervals? When we're talking about when something's increasing and decreasing? Okay, same thing here. We want to talk about um, when is this happening in a function? So. When I read this, it says for which x values is f of x greater than or equal to g of x. If a function is greater than another function, what does it appear to be doing? What, what would you think? You think it involves increasing and decreasing? I don't know. Which one is what? <laughs> Not constant. If I'm saying a function is greater than another function, <coughs> it's going to be what? There is a picture right here. Can you draw a better picture? Parallel. Like, give me an example of what you're saying. So yeah. I know what you're saying. Okay, what it's saying is, for example, if I have, let's say. Just draw lines. No, let's say if I have <laughs> f of 1 and g of 1. Yep. Which is greater? Which is greater? G, G right? right? And what do you notice about G? It's it's, a, it's what? It's higher. it's higher. It's above f of x. So visually, what does that mean if a function is greater than another function? It's higher. It's going to be higher. It's going to be above it, right? So basically, this question is saying when is f of up, f of x? On top, right? So when is it on top of G of X? Right there. From negative infinity. Okay, from where? From three. Negative infinity to what? To negative two. To negative two. So from negative infinity, that's a horrible infinity. Wait, wait. And then where else am I above this function? Three to positive infinity. Eight. Um, I stopped, don't I? Do I put a break? Three to like <coughs> seven point eight. Eight. No. Eight. It's eight because it says equal to, so I can be equal to it. So I stop at eight, don't I? Like right here eight. at eight. I'm really getting mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you stop at eight. I stop at eight. Actually, why do you feel like it's seven and some change? But I don't freaking know. Okay, do you feel like that because I stop right here on the x-axis and you feel like it should be on the x-axis? <coughs> That's not the case. My function keeps going until I get... Uh, until it touches the... Yeah, tree. so I'm still above it until that point, right? Oh, uh, okay, so yeah, I know that. That's why I need... We're here to learn together. So what if it wouldn't have <laughs> or equal to sign? Then it would be like 0.9999 continue or whatever. Oh, I wrote infinity instead of an 8. Okay, so when my function is greater than, that means visually it's going to be above it, right? So if this had said less than, then which ones would I have worried about? The ones that are under. When it's underneath <laughs> it, right? Yeah. Okay, 
All right, next question says, for which x values is g of x, I mean, f minus g of x less than 0? Okay, when a number is less than 0, what, what kind of um, numbers do I produce? What? Negatives. So I want to know, when do I produce negatives? How about a good negative 2? <laughs> Keep going. Negative 2, negative two to win. Negative 3. Negative 3. To win? Good job, Esmeralda. What did she say? Negative 2 to 3. Because what happens here? f of x is less than g. And when you take a function that is small, a big function, and subtract from a small function, what do they produce? A big function. Negative. Exactly. So if I take this function and I'm subtracting from this function, my answers are going to always be negative. Negative. So let's test it out. So right here, we had here, right? What? Right here? Right. Okay. So right here, if I did f of one, f of negative one, what kind of answer did we get when we did f of negative one? Negative one. A negative one. Is that a negative number? Yeah. All right. Let's test out another one just to make sure it works. So if I did f minus g of x of zero, is it going to give me a negative answer? Yes. So what's f of zero? Well, it's not negative two. Negative one point eight. I'll take eight. We'll cut. And then what's g of zero? Two point three. Was it that funny, Jordan? Yes, it was. That is two of And what kind of answer did I produce? A negative, and that works because it's in between the interval of two, negative two, and Three. Now, wouldn't it, wouldn't it go from like eight to negative infinity? Not negative infinity, but what? What's to the right, Ash? Uh, positive infinity. infinity. Good job. How did I get one point two? That's my point. How did I get one point two? Yep. Yes. Which because one point eight plus one point two is three. What? It is. Why did you get one point two? But it's negative. Oh. Negative. Y'all are so right. Shauna, horrible. Miss Jones, whatever your name is. <laughs> whatever your name is. So it's not even a negative, it's a positive. Yeah, get your mom. Oh, it's a negative? Come on, mother. You have to do better. Remember when you're subtracting a positive? That means you're adding a negative? So it's a negative 4.8? What? If I said 2 minus 5, 2 minus 5, what do I get? Okay, what happens if I had a negative 2 minus 5? It would be a negative 7, right? So that is why this is negative 4.8. And I initially created that confusion, so I sincerely apologize. Oh, that was a good apology. 10 extra bonus points. Nice try, Miles. I like to do the video, not us. Come on, mother. No. Are you recording? Yes. Terrible video, like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is how we normally are. I mean. All right.